Henry with perfect gift he sent her after her addiction secret gets out. Hillary Clinton is back in the spotlight as she gearing up to push her memoir What Happened. In the book, Hillary Clinton hints at a possible addiction to alcohol in an obvious attempt to garner sympathy from her rabid supporters and blame President Trump for her pain. Well, if Hillary Clinton was ticked off by her epic loss last November what Trump just tweeted should have her even angrier. Hillary Clinton is like a gnat that just won't go away no matter how many times you swat at it. Clinton has just finished writing her memoir detailing her loss last November to Donald Trump. Within hours of returning to Washington, D.C. after visiting the flood-ravaged cities in the wake of Hurricane Harvey, President Trump took the time to take a swipe at Hillary Clinton by sharing this meme. Of course, Trump got right back to business and tweeted topics on a more serious note, but you know the left is already raging mad, right? Here is more from Daily Mail, Clinton is expected to launch a nationwide book tour to promote the memoir. In one chapter of the book, Clinton explained what was going on in her head when Trump lurked behind her during a presidential debate in St. Louis, Missouri. Clinton steamed, What would you do? Do you stay calm, keep smiling and carry on as if you weren't repeatedly invading your space? Or do you turn, look him in the eye and say loudly and clearly, Back up, you creep, get away from me. Clinton also opened up about her dark days with Bill in a new memoir but doesn't mention Monica Lewinsky by name as the once presidential hopeful admits that she stayed with the former president because she loved him. Clinton, herself, will be speaking out, not just in the pages of the book, but on a 15-city book tour being called Hillary Clinton Live. Tickets at some of the Canadian dates are going for $1,200 American dollars each. Hillary Clinton lost the election not just because her policies would have sunk America, but she also came off as insincere. Clinton reeks of the old tired establishment of money and elitism and the American people were not buying this time. Watch now. More. Related. Breaking News 24. Trump stuns everyone in Houston with first thing he did as soon as he entered the room. Right off the bat. Those in the mainstream media were quick to criticize President Trump and Melania for their attire and short visit last week. At any rate, President Trump just silenced all his naysayers with what he just did after arriving in Houston, Texas. Just recently, the United States was hit by horrible Hurricane Harvey that has left 40 dead. President Trump has been quick in his response time and has shown tremendous leadership and compassion to those suffering from this disaster. Not only has President Trump been quick to help with federal aid, but he has donated $1 million of his own money to the victims of Harvey that does not seem to matter to the left as they continue to lambaste the commander-in-chief. Trump and our lovely First Lady Melania Trump visited the victims of Hurricane Harvey as well as loaded supplies into vehicles that were going to shelters and, that is not all that President Trump did. It has been a wonderful thing. Trump said of his meetings with the children as he served food to evacuees amid shouts of thank you, sir. Trump, who declared Sunday a national day of prayer, also went to a church in nearby Perland, where he and his wife helped load half a dozen cars with boxes of supplies for victims. Trump asked Congress late on Friday for an initial $7.85 billion for hurricane recovery efforts. Already in a Yahoo article. The reporter throws in there that natural disasters do not typically help approval numbers and claim that Trump has a 59% disapproval rating. According to the Reuters, Ipsos tracking poll, almost 59% of the public disapproves of Trump's performance as president. Ru Smith, a political science professor at the University of New Hampshire, said Trump had done well overall in coordinating federal assistance and showing concern on Saturday for those affected by Harvey. Texas Strong 8.57 p.m., September 2, 2017 2525 replies 272-272 retweets 503-503 likes Twitter ads info and privacy The left can say what they want but they cannot take away what a wonderful man Trump really is.
Trump has shown during this horrible natural disaster the type of leader he is and that is one of compassion and strength. Trump is not a racist or a bigot he just has a love of country and a desire to make America great again. Watch now. More. Related. Breaking News 24. Melania just stepped off Air Force One in Texas today and flipped off all her haters with what she did on tarmac. The latest critique was over an outfit especially, for high heel shoes, that the First Lady Melania Trump wore when they went to Texas after Hurricane Harvey's destruction. During his first visit, President Trump and Melania visited the people and did their best to find out what the victims of this horrific hurricane needed. Even after all of that these liberal fascists went on to try to destroy the first family with their hate. No matter what the first family did, it was not good enough, and all they could focus on was Melania's attire. What was great about the second arrival of the Trump family to Texas is, that Melania showed that she wasn't phased at all from the hate she received. Melania Trump had a clear message for naysayers on Saturday as she made her second trip to the disaster-struck state, the high heels are here to stay. Clinging to her husband for some support as her stiletto point dug into the grass on the south lawn, she turned her back on a wave of criticism she received on Tuesday during her first visit to Harvey Hit regions. As the hurricane continued beating rain down on Houston, swamping entire neighborhoods and leaving thousands clambering to their roofs to be rescued, Melania emerged from the White House on Tuesday morning in a black version of the heels she wore on Saturday, a bomber jacket and some oversized sunglasses. The high heels worn earlier in the day however dominated conversation about the president's visit to the afflicted state and divided opinion. Some said the outfit was even worse than her first attempt. Supporters praised Melania for not giving in to the flack and celebrated her as a troll master and bada. Flotus Melania stayed true to herself and to hell with the haters, as she boarded Air Force One in high heels. She's a troll master. Love her. There's observed, Melania is trolling with those heels. Share this if you love Melania and don't care what she wears. Watch now. More. Related. Breaking News 24 Real Reason Michelle's on solo trip exposed with what Barack was just caught doing behind her back. While Michelle's trip was presented as just another need for more rest and relaxation in solitude, it seemed strange since there's arguably no person on the planet who rests and relaxes more than this former first lady. Celebrity news site Radar Online reports, ex-Flotus Michelle Obama was floating on a yacht off of Spain just before Labor Day weekend, but the former president, her husband Barack, was nowhere around. Michelle's apparently solo vacation could raise questions about the marriage as Barack has previously been seen traveling solo and not wearing his wedding ring, as Radar has reported. Michelle is living the single lady yacht life while scantily clad and seemingly taking fashion cues from her young daughters. Michelle Obama going out in Mallorca, Spain without a bra on at a bare minimum, the approval of her trashy club wear attire that liberals seem to praise her for, should render their argument invalid over anything classy Melania Trump wears. Namely, Melania's footwear of choice in Texas where she attended to the needs of flood victims, which Michelle never did. Michelle has had several classless public displays since moving out of the White House, as she no longer has to hide her true self behind her first lady facade. A few months ago, we witnessed the real Michelle show complete disregard for sacred holy sites when she showed up to a historic Italian Catholic church in a blouse literally held together by a few strings and falling off her. Most respectable people have the wherewithal to realize that there's a staunch dress code in places like this, but Michelle didn't seem to care. Acting like a teen or millennial, Michelle went out in public forgetting something she probably should have put on before leaving her hotel room. Michelle emerged for dinner wearing a black strappy outfit with no bra. Michelle went on a hike around the island, surrounded by her staff and security. And if you didn't know it was a former first lady, you'd assume that it was a thuggish rapper based on her attire. 
Trying to hide her face with a black hood, Michelle stomped around the island in all black street clothes. Watch now. More. Related. Breaking News 24. Barack just demanded $1.1 million special allowance from taxpayers with sick way he plans to use it. Almost six months after the Obamas left office the details of their expenses have hit the public. It turns out they were the most expensive modern ex-presidential couple to grace the halls of the White House. Reporter Stephen Dinan with The Washington Post wrote. Former President Barack Obama is about to become the most expensive ex-president, costing taxpayers $1,153,000 next year, according to a new Congressional Research Service memo looking at the official allowances for the five living former chief executives. His $1,153,000 budget request for 2018 is more than $100,000 higher than George W. Bush's request for next year and nearly $200,000 more than Bill Clinton's expected budget. George H. W. Bush is slated to get $942,000, while Jimmy Carter will get less than half that, at just $456,000. Obama is not simply spending the money on lavish vacations for himself and Michelle to hobnob with European socialists and their celebrity friends. They are also renting a Washington, D.C.-based office space that is over 8,000 square feet for $536,000, all at the taxpayer's expense. His pension payment is the highest of all living presidents, costing Americans $236,000 a year. Obama presented himself as a man of the people who understood the troubles of the middle and lower class. As more details about his past and behind-the-scenes activities came to light, this has proven to be false. During his administration, he directed the government to spend millions of dollars on global warming research, gender studies, lavish vacations, golfing trips, and prosecuting his political enemies with the IRS and the Department of Justice. Meanwhile, Americans fell deeper into poverty and veterans suffered at the hands of an ambivalent VA department. Even though he has been out of the White House, Obama is still taking advantage of the perks of his office at the expense of the American taxpayer. The astronomical request is simply a slap in the face to taxpayers given the catastrophic damages from Hurricane Harvey as well as the fact that all former presidential budgets have been substantially lower. Doesn't he have enough money already from his paid speeches and book profits? The Daily Mail reported the following. Carter's relatively short time in Washington, he spent just one term there and hadn't worked in the federal government before he got elected in 1976, help keep his costs down, in an unusual feature of the report. Since he didn't serve five years, he doesn't get government employer-provided health benefits though he presumably gets Medicare. The law governing benefits for former presidents is the 1958 Former Presidents Act. Modern post-presidents are able to command hundreds of thousands of dollars for speeches. Barack and Michelle Obama reportedly inked a book deal worth more than $60 million after leaving the White House. Some may be questioning why he even has access to ask for such large amounts of funds. However, under the 1958 Former Presidents Act, the past commanders-in-chief have a right to lifetime benefits after they leave office which includes an annual base pension of $205,700. But they can submit budgetary requests for additional funds to Congress for travel, allowances, and Secret Service protection. Given Republican control of Congress, the Senate, and the White House the likelihood of this request being approved is slim to none. It also seems wildly hypocritical given the former president's track record. A sore point for his administration was the lavish vacations he took. This lifestyle didn't change when they left the White House because they went on a luxurious Indonesian vacation for 10 days where they stayed at the Mid-Pacific Country Club and visited Oahu as well as Italy's Borgo Finocciato Hotel. They had six fighter jets, a private plane, and a 13-car motorcade. The villa they stayed in cost $15,000 a night. 
the $8.1 million DC home they rent and $15 million vacant lot they want to purchase in Martha's Vineyard certainly doesn't help their case in trying to portray themselves as working class and average. Liberals love to point fingers at conservatives for being monetarily out of touch with average Americans. They pride themselves on the working class, minority votes they get yet the leader of their own party shows through his lifestyle choices and his grossly negligent budgetary requests that it is he who is weirdly out of touch with average Americans and reality. How is anyone supposed to take this seriously? Hurricane Harvey has cost the United States billions in FEMA payments, we are close to nuclear war in the Korean Peninsula which will require a build-up in money to fund the increasing military presence, and we have an upcoming border wall that taxpayers will have to pay. Simply put, we cannot afford this wasteful spending by someone not even in office anymore. This news gets sold really quick. Share this on social media if you think President Obama is out of touch for requesting this money from Congress during such difficult times. Watch now. More. Related. Breaking News 24 Melania put on blue coat to show up at surprise location on special mission that enraged Michelle. First Lady Melania Trump is the very picture of class and elegance that America has been lacking for so long. After eight long years of witnessing Michelle Obama disgrace the title of First Lady, it is refreshing to see Melania grace the White House. Everyone in the mainstream media has been following Melania to see where she shows up next and what she is wearing. Last week, Melania Trump fanned the flames of liberal stupidity when they attacked her for wearing stilettos on Air Force One to visit Hurricane Harvey victims. Then on Saturday Melania Trump tweaked the hypocritical left by stirring up liberal rage when she wore stilettos onto Air Force One again. Never mind the fact that Melania was out in the heat working to make sure that Hurricane Harvey victims were getting supplies and feeding the hungry. As seen in the below photo, Melania wore pastel colors and sky-high heels once more. Melania sported a coat that seemed to be the color of a robin's egg and a dress that was pink. Trump waved as he and Melania left St. John's Church in Washington, D.C. Trump had declared a national day of prayer by signing a proclamation in recent days to focus on prayer for any persons who were affected by Hurricane Harvey. According to The Washington Post, President Trump and Melania arrived for church services at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday. Whereas Melania chose brighter colors, President Trump donned a dark suit with a tie that contained colors that complemented Melania's pink dress and powder blue coat. At a meeting on Friday with leaders in the faith community, President Trump not only signed the proclamation but also spoke from the Oval Office about Americans being prayerful people, especially during times of crisis, in order to ask for God's blessing and God's guidance. Seeing Melania Trump looking this elegant and classy must have Michelle Obama fuming mad. Even on Michelle's best day, she cannot hold a candle to Melania Trump's flawless style and elegance. For Melania to go to Texas with President Trump and show the country and the world that she stands with the American people is a real class act that the United States deserves to see again.